CBS News reporter Haley Ott joins us now from Tel Aviv, Israel. Uh, we spoke to MTS a little bit earlier, Haley, and I just want to start off sort of getting a sense from you what is happening right now on the ground. Um, hello. Uh, there, the violence is continuing today. There have been airstrikes all day on Gaza. Um, there have been rockets fired from Gaza. Less, fewer rockets, but rockets fired from um, Lebanon in the north of the country. So the conflict is very much ongoing. Over 300,000 Israeli army reservists have been called up and Israeli troops have been gathering along the border of Gaza in southern Israel. We still don't know exactly what is going to come next, what kind of retaliation Israel will will carry out for Saturday's brutal attack by Hamas. But the situation is fluid and developing at the moment here on when the you, ground. When you talk about those 3,000 reservists that have been called up, do we have any, any sense of when um, that the ground troops might get in there into Gaza? Because there were obviously talks about the mobilization happening. Do we, do we know when that could happen, if tonight or tomorrow morning? We do. We don't. We don't. We, we've heard a lot about uh, the scale of the revenge. It's actually 300,000, 300, um, which is unprecedented. Yeah. Um, but we don't know what, when, or even what is going to happen. Uh, we've heard that it might be some sort of ground incursion, that there might be some, some sort of entry into Gaza by ground troops, would, which would obviously be a significant uh, move and potentially very, very violent there. But we just really need to wait and see. And that those decisions are being made, I'm sure, as we speak. There obviously also is the issue of the over 100 hostages that have been taken uh, from Israel. Obviously, they were abducted on Saturday, taken back into Gaza, and what, what's to be done about them. Uh, their safety is also something that I'm sure people are trying to work out behind the scenes. So all of that uh, is being discussed, and we, we are just waiting and seeing what's going to happen. As we focus so much on things really starting Saturday, do we know if we've seen any injuries or fatalities as a result of Gaza, you know, shooting those rockets over to, to parts of Israel since Saturday um, in terms of how the Iron Dome is holding up, which is able to um, stop some of those, those rockets, those missiles from actually reaching the ground. It's difficult uh, to know exact injury or casualty or death figures from these rocket attacks because everything is happening so quickly mm -hmm. and first responders have to get to where the rockets land. Some rockets land in, in empty areas and, and some rockets don't land. As you mentioned, Iron Dome, We've, we're here in Tel Aviv um, multiple times today. We had the air raid sirens go off. We, we went to our shelter. Um, I, I believe I heard booms that were rocket intercepts. Uh, they're fairly recognizable and they happen fairly often. So we've been experiencing the Iron Dome holding up, um, preventing rockets from landing. Uh, but obviously some have gotten through. Obviously um, also just the sheer number of rockets mean that some have gotten through. And uh, the numbers of people affected by those come out uh, kind of, they take a bit of time to calculate by Israeli authorities who are also dealing with, as you could imagine, a lot a lot of other things on their plate. Are you able to speak to some of the people? I know it's, it's getting dark there now. It's 6 or, or 7 o'clock in Tel Aviv. Is that right? It's uh, 8. 8 o'clock. Are you able to, um, have you been able to speak to more people? Because I know we keep hearing that same story of a lot of folks in, in Israel that are either looking for their loved ones concerned about people that they haven't heard from, those who actually know that their loved ones were taken hostage. Um, but what more are you hearing from the people there in, in the last few hours? This morning, I actually talked to a 25-year-old who is an American. He's from Miami, and he's uh, studying economics at Columbia, who uh, has traveled back to Israel. He had served in the IDF when he was 17. He'd come to Israel and joined the Israeli army. Um, and as soon as he heard about what was going on uh, on Saturday on social media is how he heard, he immediately scrambled to get on a flight. And he was telling me about how a number of his friends had done the exact same thing. And, and he'd heard that people across the United States 
um, and the world were doing the exact same thing. And he was telling me how uh, for him and for people who have served in the Israeli army, mm -hmm. there's really been a sense of, you know, some some people might try to to get out if there's a, a conflict or violence or a war, but but they're really trying to get in um, to do what they can for their communities. Yeah, that says a lot. That says a lot. Well, Haley Oak, we appreciate your reporting and, and stay safe.